Hello, I'm excited to start a new playlist on an exploration of the Tidyverse, which is all the rage in R and is a super cool set of packages for data analysis. I'm not an expert in all of the Tidyverse, not by a long stretch, so I'll be learning for a lot of it, but I did think it'd be helpful, useful to start with a basic question that is to answer the question, what is tidy data? To answer the question, what is tidy data? My resource will be this book, R for Data Science, and that's because this is the textbook we used when I went to a workshop seminar focused on the tidyverse. And the host of that seminar was Charlotte Wickham, who's the sister of one of the co-authors. The co-authors here are Hadley Wickham and Garrett Groleman. So this book, R for Data Science, is a great resource for the tidyverse. And then, so we'll answer the question, what is tidy data? We can think about a rectangular, right? That is our unit of data that's familiar to us, even if we're coming from the R, or even if we're coming from the Excel world, where, right, we have columns and rows. Although it's going to be more accurate, more helpful in data science world here to refer to these, the columns as variables and the rows as observations. If we're doing machine learning, then the variables would would be maybe should be called features, but we'll stick here with variables and observations. And then the three conditions for tidy data are one, each variable has its own column. Second condition, each observation has its own row. Third condition, each value has its own cell. Those are the three conditions. That's really it. Untidy data tends to be represented by a violation of one of the first two, right? So that first condition is each variable has its own column and really only one column. So the violation of tidy data tends to be when we have a variable, probably hard to see here because it's a preview of what I'm going to load in just a minute. The variable is year, but oftentimes the data comes in, that single variable is effectively scattered over multiple columns, right? So if we have the variable scattered over columns, then the variable doesn't really have, is not really contained in one column and it's not tidy. Similarly, same concept really on the rows, that, that second condition was that each observation has its own row and really is contained only on one row, but realistically in practical terms oftentimes what we want what should be a single observation is scattered over multiple rows and so that's not tidy data as well okay so easier to understand those with an illustration and so i'm going to use the same data that's in the textbook and that's convenient because it's actually already part of the tidyverse library so i've already installed that package and so library loads it. And then I'm just going to pull up the four tables that are built into the tidyverse. And the purpose of these tables is precisely to illustrate tidy and untidy data. But just to know the data that we're looking at, it's from the World Health Organization, WHO here. And it's a small data set with four variables. Cases, years, country, population. So what we're getting is, with respect to tuberculosis, the infectious disease, we're getting the first variable, the number of TB cases in a given year. This small data set is only for years 1999 and 2000. Within a certain country, although this small data set only includes Afghanistan, Brazil, and China, and then the fourth variable is the population of that country on that year. Okay, so those four variables. Then we have four tables. Table one is the only one that's tidy that meets that those three conditions of tidy data. I think it's easier to look at the other three as examples of untidy data because then then by the time you get back to, we come back to one, it makes a little more sense for me anyway. Here's table two, which is not tidy, and I, to me this is not trivial. This is not really super easy because. I see a rec I at first see a rectangle and the re a rectangle is a clean structure so I think immediately think well isn't this tidy but this is actually not tidy 
right, what we're getting here in the first two rows is we're getting an observation that's scattered over two rows. Right here we have Afghanistan in 1999 witnessed two, 745 cases of tuberculosis. At the time that it had how much population? Well, that's on the second row. So really, we've got a single observation that's scattered over two rows, making this untidy. And the two telltale signs are type's not a variable. The variables are alternating here underneath type. And then maybe the maybe the more obvious yellow red flag here is count. Count's not a variable, right? What we're getting in count is a mixture here of number of cases and then switching to population, cases switching to population. So you see how if we look at this row, we're not really getting a single variable. It really depends on which row we're getting an alter we're getting a mix of two variables, which uh, you know confirms the fact that this first observation is scattered over two rows. Okay, I'm going to go to table four, which is split into 4A and 4B. And I think it's cool they did this because realistically, this is what happens when you, you know, import data. You know, you'll get it in however format it is and sometimes in the two different tables. So we have 4A and 4B. They have the same format. Here's 4A. And the format is the three countries. And then notice we have a column here with a header 1999 and 2000. So in Afghanistan, there were, well, this whole table is the number of tuberculosis cases. So in 1999, Afghanistan witnessed 745 cases, and then it jumped the next year to 2,666 cases. So all six of these are cases. And then table 4B is population, right? So I'll switch over to that. Population of Afghanistan, in 1999, just shy of 20 million, following year, just above 20 million, right? Okay, so I'll go back to table 4A, and now we have the other classic case of untidy data. Remember, we just looked at untidy data where the observation, that first observation was really scattered over two rows. Here we have really a variable that's scattered over two columns. And telltale sign here is that 1999 is not a variable. It's a value. And 2000 is a value, not a variable. These Each of these values should be under what is the true variable, which is year. And if we need any confirmation of that, we could just imagine we'll let importing additional data. Maybe we want the year 1998 and the year 2001. We wouldn't want to structure our setup in such a way that adding an additional year on the on uh, each of the tails, at, right, introduce new uh, additional columns or new structure. We probably wouldn't want to do that. We could. It makes more sense to have a single column, and such that if we add 1998 and 2001, those come in as uh, new values in that column. So the condition is each variable has its own column and really only one column. The violation here is the variable is year, but it's really scattered over two columns and confirmed by the fact that the labels are not variables at all. They're actually values under the variable year. Okay, so table three, Three, I think, to me, is the easiest uh, instance of a violation, or easiest instance of untidy data, although I'm gl glad they included it because this is realistic. It also just happens to be the most efficient data import in a way, right? We're getting country, year, and then this column is called rate, and it contains the number of cases of TB tuberculosis forward slash number of cases forward slash population in that year. So it is efficient but it violated that third condition. Now we've shown a violation of each of the three conditions, right? That third condition was that each value has its own cell. But the problem here is that the each of the two values are sharing one cell. So these need to be separated, and literally the command is separate to, to uh, liberate them into their own cell. So that's the third case of untidy data. And so that, but we've now seen a kit, 
well, I'm now seeing an untidy where r- really the observation was scattered over two rows. We've seen untidy data where the variable was scattered over two columns. And we've seen an observation where the cell contains jointly two values such that we can better appreciate, whoops, the table one, which is tidy. And now we see all three conditions. Each variable has its own column, country, year, cases, population. Each observation has its own row. So, for example, if we want to go back and add 1998 for somebody, 2001, it's a new observation, a new row, and each value has its own cell. And the advantages to this include, but are not limited to, here's the example. In the book, it makes things easier if we want to, for example, answer the question, what is the rate of the infectious disease? And this will allow us to, say, feed feed that tidy table one via a pipe command that's part of dplyr. So that's the database uh, supplied to the mutate command, which simply creates a new variable. So the variable is really going to just be a new column called rate. And we, def- we define the calculation for it, the which is cases divided by population. And because it's tidy, that's a clean row by row operation. And I guess it's multiplied by 10,000 so that this could be represented as cases per 10,000. I thought it was usually per 100,000, but they've got 10,000 in there. And I'm pretty sure that's what's in the book. So if I hit enter there, you see the point is that tidy data enable us to make a simple calculation like this and compute this rate as a clean formula of cases per population, in part because each observation has its own row. Hopefully we're in a better position now to understand how we render tables two and four, which were untidy, into their tidy equivalents. Their tidy equivalents will in fact be table one. So here I'll use the gather command right here And what I'll do is I'll first just, I'll run this along with table 4A here, the untidy version, and then table 4A, which is created with the gather command and is the tidy version. So here was our table 4A. It's untidy because the variables are scattered over multiple columns. When the variables are scattered over multiple columns, it's got gather is the appropriate command where we give it here the columns that we want to gather, right? So what we're doing there with the gathers, we're specifying really let's gather these two variables into a single variable. And the key specifies then says that we're going to gather these under year. And so that means 1990 and 2000 will then become right values under year as they should be. And then value equals cases. That means that the numeric values here are going to be assigned under the variable cases, right? So that's how that syntax becomes this table here with the gather command. And so the, it is true that we doubled the number of cells here. We went from a three by three to a six by three by gathering those two columns into really a single column here, putting what what were the labels for the header under the year variable per the key equals year. And then the, the associated values fall under the new column, the new variable called cases. And so down here, well, this is just the same concept, really. The other table 4B, you recall, contained the population of the countries. So we run that. We get 
the we gather the populations similarly into 4B, and then a left join uh, combines 4A and 4B into a single uh, table that now should match that first table and is tidy. Finally, the spread command is the opposite. So we just did a gather, which was appropriate when the variable was scattered over multiple columns. Now we go back to table two to remind. Here, the problem is that an observation is scattered over multiple rows. And so the solution for that, or the fix for that, is the spread command, table two. Or let me get let me look at table two first. And what we're gonna so table two is piped to the spread command, and so we need to tell it key equals type. That tells us here's the original table two. What are what are the appropriate variable names? Right, we want cases and population as variable names. Key equals type. So with the key equals type, we're telling it really spread this spread this column out in other words bring cases up to its own variable name and bring population i'm not drawing that very well i'll do it right here bring cases up to its own variable name spread population up to its own variable name right we spread the, by key equals type we say this is the column we want you to spread so that what are currently values in the column, spread those up so that now they now become variable names. And then what are we going to use for values? Well, we're going to use for values as specified right here. We're, we're going to use what's in the count, right? So population gets spread up here and its value is what's in the count column. So that's the spread. And that's a review of what is tidy data. You can see tidy data is when we meet three conditions. Each variable has its own column and only one column, when each observation has its own row and only one row, and each value has its own cell. If the video is helpful, subscribe to the channel for sure because I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on the tidyverse as I share what I'm learning about it. Thanks.